Woo. Hey, we got a friend. Oh, uh, what's that in there? Tree frog. Oh. Hey! <laughs> you caught him Let's again. Put him somewhere safe. All right. All right, so I'm going to pull this out. Here's our bead filter. Okay. Half of a bead filter. So this is uh, an XS 1000 chopped in half with a piece of clear plexiglass on it. So uh, these were originally manufactured for educational purposes only, just like this. All right. Okay. All right. So here we go. So let's plug it in. What do you say? Let's plug it in. All right. Let's do it. Good. Okay. Water's coming in. Look at all these solids that are wow. getting stirred up right yeah, now. You can see them. It's a bunch so of them. So as these beads rise, we want them to be a nice, we call a static bead bed. Okay. Okay. So we don't want this bead bed to move. This is our return. This is clean water. Clean water. Okay. Clean water. Okay. So look at, take a look at this. I'm going to put this back inside of this sump. Okay. This is solid waste, dirty water coming in, getting captured in the beads. And because this is just for illustrative purposes, this is going to get captured. We're going to backwash this and all this crap is going to go right back inside of this sump since it's just a cycle on itself. Okay. But this is normal operation. Okay. And if, if you look closely, all these small solids are getting captured inside of the beads. Okay. You can follow a few of them there, trap there, mm -hmm. trap there. They get, they might get a few inches, then they'll get trapped in here. And as more particles get trapped, the spaces in between the beads become smaller and smaller. Uh, and then, it, and then you capture more, more yes. smaller okay. solids. Okay. So we say that solids capturing ability of a bead filter, uh, an AST bead filter, is 100% uh, of particles in the 50 micron range. Okay. All right. That's real small. Right. And then. 50% in the 5 to 10 micron range. That's per pass. Okay. So the more passes through the filter, the cleaner your water is going to get. Solids in your water are no good, especially if it's solid poop. Uh, but any organic solids inside of a recirculating system are no good because when they break down, uh, they'll uh, steal oxygen mm -hmm. from the fish. Um, that's a big problem. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you also don't want the water to be cloudy because you want to be able to see your fish um, and see how they're behaving. Are they behaving properly? Um, so those two things. Yeah. And then the beads are also doing the biological filtration. Okay. By providing surface area for bacteria. Two types of bacteria are very important for biological filtration. And those bacteria are going to be converting ammonia to nitrite and then from nitrite to nitrate. Right, okay. All right, and in aquaponics, nitrate is that awesome, usable form of nitrogen that is going to be coming out of your outflow, right? So nitrogen, ammonia, and nitrite in, nitrate out. Clean, nitrate-rich water out. Send that right to plants. They love it. Let's do a backwash. Okay, so For backwash those. is when we're going to take all of the crap that's caught on the beads and we're going to expel it from the system. Okay? Okay. So we want all these solids that are inside of here, so all the poop from all the fish from the day before, we want all that to be gone. So once we get it in here and we trap it, we don't want it going back into the tank, we want it out. So the backwash is going to do uh, two things. It's going to drain the entire volume of the filter. And when it starts, when we initiate the backwash, an air bubble is going to get sucked in through this port right here. And that's what gives the filter its name, the bubble wash filter. So when this air bubble gets sucked inside, 
beads will be draining and an air bubble will be shooting up through them. And that's going to shake all the solids off of the beads and then they're going to drain back out the same way they came in. Okay? The first step is going to be undoing our water pump, right? So we want to have no water flowing. We either want to bypass the filter or we want to um, turn our water pump off for the backwash. So step one, water pump off, okay? So okay. we're gonna do that simultaneously. I'm gonna unplug the back, the, uh, the fill, uh, excuse me, the pump, and you're going to spin this 180 degrees, and then Brooklyn's gonna have to move fast so he can see what's going on over here, okay. all right? Ready, one, two, three. Nice, huh? Okay, so what do we have going on here? It's the Look at all these solids. All these solids that were just trapped in the beads. And this bubble was oh, shaking, there's a ton of them, shaking, yeah. shaking, shaking. Oh. All of this is now getting drained out of the bottom. All right? All that is gone. Beads are now clean. Woo! So this thing <laughs> does it by itself. With a turn of a knob and plug it in a pump. That's it. That's it. That's that it. saves aquaponic people who has aquaponics save them time, valuable time, and it doesn't get any cleaner than this. No, we have a uh, a, a good saying. Uh, you can backwash this filter wearing a tuxedo if you wanted to. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we could have done all kind of cool things with the solid waste that was on the beads, right? We could drain that to a five gallon bucket. We could mineralize that waste, right? Mm -hmm. We could uh, drain to land-based uh, garden, you know, fruit trees right. here in Florida. You can do anything like that. But the point of this is all the crap, you get it on the beads, trap it on the beads, and then you want to get it out, all right? Now we put it straight back into this sump so that we can trap it again. Right, because this thing's cycling on itself. But this is a workable filter. This is a usable filter. Okay? So when we the backwash isn't complete, we're fifty percent of the way finished. Alright? So we're going to reverse those steps and then we're gonna be flowing Ooh, again. Yeah. Right? So the process takes anywhere from two to three minutes. Very simple, very quick. Alright? So I'm just gonna do that real quick. I'm gonna spin my three-way valve back to the starting position. I'm gonna plug my water pump back in. And we're filling back right up. Right back up. Filling back up. So with this system, you can clean out your water within a couple two, minutes. Two, three easy steps. Now with this one, now Brooklyn, that one over there, that probably takes you five minutes max yeah it didn't it didn't take that long i just did a backwash on it a practice one and it took just a few minutes okay i did about two days ago okay just awesome. a few minutes so here we are solids getting Solid captured again, again okay. on the beads now we talked about clarification and crap that's on the beads but all the solid waste that's on the beads um that's all feeding pretty much the the engine that runs this whole thing which is the bacteria right without the bacteria this is just a clarifier. So we have to make sure that we manage this filter for both clarification and biological filtration. So you have to backwash this filter regularly. All right, and that depends on your feed rate. Mm -hmm. But um, normally one backwash a day in a production setting is plenty. All right, um, if you're using this on a lightly loaded system, like a brood stock um, or even a koi pond uh, that's lightly loaded, not many fish, not that much feed. You can backwash it you know, every two days, every three days. Um, in super lightly loaded systems, you can backwash maybe every four or five days. Um, so that's good for like little home aquaponic systems? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, but, so they wouldn't have to do much work, okay. No, absolutely okay. not. Now these, these types of filters, um, you know, we say that they're bulletproof because it's so simple to understand. Water comes in here and it goes out up here. Before the dirty water is able to leave, it must be cleaned by the beads. Right. 
and the turn of a three-way valve to drain all the solids out and a flip of a switch or unplugging a pump is all you have to do. You're clean, you don't get messy, we didn't get water sprayed all over us, we're not spraying anything with a hose, uh, the filter does the work for you. Now, what size, what size are available and how would I know which bubble be wash beef filters that I should buy from my aquaponic system? So, we base these based on flow rate, feed rate, mm -hmm. all right? So, what we say is um, flow rate, it's simply 10 to 15 gallons per minute per cubic foot of media. And we only have a quarter cubic foot of media here, but the lowest flow rate we say is uh, desirable. It's going to be 10 cubic, uh, excuse me, 10 gallons per minute. So we want to run 10 gallons a minute through this filter. Uh, it's our smallest filters are 10 gallons per minute. And we go all the way up to 1,500 gallons per minute. We have enormous filters. All right. But on a small scale aquaponics system, uh, 10 to as much as 60, even 90 gallons per minute uh, is sometimes needed. All right. And that's just determined by how much feed goes into the system. Uh, and then your turnover time, right, Brooklyn? Yep, that's actually right. How, yeah. how much we want to turn this tank over. Right. All right. Um, so uh, it always gets a little bit uh, tricky when you want to look at feed rate. So feed rate at what percent protein, and right. what percent yep. fat. Yep. You know, those things get a little bit, little bit more detailed. Right. Um, but basically, you want to maintain a total ammonia nitrogen level that is specific to your production system. So we say a total ammonia nitrogen level of one milligram per liter is applicable in a light grow out or brood stock condition. So 0.5 to one milligram per liter. Now we can up that in uh, tilapia grow out conditions because they're real hardy fish. Yep. And we can go up to one and a half milligrams per liter. All right, so that means you can feed real heavy and maintain a total ammonia nitrogen of one and a half milligrams per liter, 1.5. Um, so uh, I normally do a lot of the sizing um, based on, you know, if somebody calls in, I'll say, yeah, let's sit down, let's look at the details, let's look at your flow rate, uh, let's great. look at the volume of the system and how much feed you want to put into the system based on how many fish you want at the end. And when we're thinking about that, how many fish do you want? How many plants do you want to grow? Right. Right? Right? So there are a lot of variables that go into this. So much that you're thinking about. You almost want something super easy to take your mind off of the filtration, ease your mind on the fish, so that you can think about some of the other stuff because it gets complicated. Yeah, right? and that's why, yeah. I, that's why I ended up buying the other filter because I didn't have, I didn't want to do. <laughs> that's much, why, yeah, I don't want to do. Too much to think about, right? Yeah, it was too much. And too much <laughs> manual labor with the, um, like the radio flow filter that I had and all the other stuff. I said, no, nah, I'm just going to go with the bead filter. That's why I, when I called you up, I'm like, this would be great to show people in aquaponics. I know this will help a lot of people yeah, that's man. doing it because yeah, yeah, yeah. we don't have time. So. And another thing that I don't always get to tell people, but... The bubble wash filter was designed uh, in the late 80s and then put into production when the company started in 1995. And I have people call me today that say, I've had my bead filter, my bubble wash bead filter since 1995. It's the best filter I've ever used and nothing's ever wrong with it. And they normally will buy a $20 part to fix it after it had been running flawlessly for over 20 years. So that investment that you make in the bead filter lasts a long, long time, yes. right? We build these things to last. Right. So it's advisable to have your filter real close to your tanks, right? So you wanna have it close to your tanks and the whole system be nice and compact, right? That's amazing. I can see how the bottom is extremely clean out. Yeah, yeah, it's cleaning out, up. isn't it? It's, it's cleaning really out. It's really cleaning out. And it's all up here. I can see all, our, all up in and out. That's what, five, six minutes? And it's all these solids are going to be captured in here. And we're going to run this for 24 hours. Right? right. You run it for 24 hours, then you backwash, 
your water gets cleaner and cleaner the more times you push it through the filter. So right? all I have to do as an aquaponic system operator, I just got to come out here and backwash it once a day on once, average. Once a day. And if I see it's not clean enough, I backwash it twice a day. And I will keep my aquaponic system water clean, fresh with vegetables and fish. Yes. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. It don't get any easier than this. It really doesn't. It really doesn't. I mean, it, it, it really doesn't get any easier. Now, Paul, can you help me if someone has a system and do not my system and does not have this? What is the other way to clean? Oh, uh, I see what you're saying. Because I don't see what is the what is the challenging way to do it without this. <laughs> what is the challenging way to do? We're standing on filter media right now, right? Some people use gravel. Gravel will provide surface area, right? Right. It'll capture solids. Uh, sand is another one. But this filter was designed because gravel and sand didn't work in recirculating aquaculture systems. So when I'm looking at this, I'm saying these beads are resistant to channeling and to biofouling. That's the two things that sand and gravel do. Some people use mats. They're effective at capturing solids. They provide surface area for bacteria. But what do you have to do with mats? You gotta pull them out. You gotta spray them off with a hose. You gotta hang them out to dry somewhere. Sometimes you have to bleach them after a little while. Same thing with gravel. Breaking your back, lifting, spraying, scrubbing. Anybody can turn this three-way valve. Anybody can turn this three-way valve. So you right. were, by having this, we're saving a lot of time, hassle, frustration, and it doesn't get <laughs> as the, clean as this with the end result. <laughs> All the above. That's amazing. <laughs> so if you do aquaponic, this is a must-have if you want it. Be, if you want the best results for your water. If you want to push, if you want to push it, you want to push your system. And you want to get the most out of it most that you it. can, right? You want to optimize the way that your your system operates. You want to optimize uh, the health of your fish, the health of your plants. Uh, you really need to uh, to think about this type of technology. Absolutely. Let's see it uh, backwash one more time. One more time. One more time. All right, spin that three-way valve. Uh, you ready, Paul? Yeah, go ahead. Look at all those solid waste. Look at all that. Okay. So, Paul, if someone needs to purchase this, you are more than happy to help them with with all the information they need, the pump size they need, yeah. and the, the size of the bubble wash filter they need to fit their system perfectly. You're an expert in that. <laughs> I am. I am. I am. I'm absolutely. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So if you guys are interested in uh, getting something like a, a bead filter, I, I recommend, highly recommend that you guys get in contact with the customer service guy, Paul. I don't recommend anybody else. I'm only dealing with Paul. That's it. Paul and that's it. So if you guys want it, contact him. He's going to be there. I promise you he's going to take care of you. You have my word for it, and I don't stamp anyone unless I know for sure. It's the customer service guy, and he's going to take care of you and get you one of these bead filters. Is that something that you're interested in? And I highly recommend. So with that being said, man, we appreciate you, Paul. You did a fantastic job, it, man. man, teaching you got the students. It, you got it. I absolutely love it, man. It was helpful. I learned some things in here. So um, hopefully you guys learned something, and that you guys are able to take it and consider getting one of these bead filters and getting your aquaponics system set up and operating effectively. All right? Woo!